Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up, guys, as we sit here on Tuesday morning. Okay. Sunday sucked. Oh, and before I get to that, let me first thank everybody who has voted for me for a fan side fan of the year. Um, tomorrow they actually announce the winner. Today's the last day to vote. So if you think I'm deserving of it and you want to vote, go to Fanside, or I'll put the link in the description. Um, if you can vote, I appreciate it. And it's been humbling. So many people that have let me know that they voted. I mean, I've got Instagram messages, Twitter messages, uh, Facebook, uh, comments on videos and stuff. And I really and truly appreciate it. Um, for me, everything is about all of us together. And if I do win, the grand prize is $2,500 StubHub uh, credit. And my plans are is I'm going to pick a game and I'm going to buy tickets for people who have never had the opportunity or the means to go to a game. And we're going to go ahead and blow that thing out and make it like a Joe Boo Sports give back um, event. And I think that's the way the way this channel goes, regardless of how many people hate me or trouble me and this, that, and the other. It's really about all of us working together. For me to have an Eagle fan send me an email that said, you know, I hate your Cowboys and stuff, but the 32 people in my office, I would not let them leave until they voted for you. To me, it's just incredible. So I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all the support and stuff. And hopefully we'll win and we'll have that dream trip for a lot of people. So here we sit, five and four. Seven games left of the season. It's not where we wanted to be, but we're so close. If we can correct some things, we can be in better shape. I mean, do you realize that three of the games we've lost by a total of eight points? that much that's how close it is between winning and losing and we just have to take care of the little things now we've killed jason garrett you know sunday night all day yesterday and i'm sure you'll get killed all this week as well but here's the reality jerry's not going to pull the plug he's not going to pull the plug before the end of the season he doesn't have a contract extension and jason garrett is what jason garrett is to expect him to be anything different than Jason Garrett, well, then that's dumb on us. Jason Garrett is not going to be the guy who's going to come to the podium and say, it's my fault. I got to do better as a coach. He's not. He's going to tell you things like, you know, Kellen Moore calls the play. Dak has a couple of options out there. We'll have to look at, you know, whether we should have fair caught that ball. You are never going to see him look you in the eye and say, I have to do better. It's just not going to happen. And Jerry Jones, as stubborn as he is, because he's believed in Jason Garrett, is going to try and make that round peg, excuse me, that square peg fit in that round hole. He's going to try and give him every opportunity to succeed, so that way he can be the guy that says, see, I told you that Jason Garrett, he's one hell of a coach. I knew he was going to lead us to the promised land. But in all reality, Every coach that has been with the same team as long as Jason Garrett has won at least one Super Bowl. That is a fact. What I also know is Jason Garrett is like a cockroach. You know, cockroaches, they say, can survive a nuclear blast. And Jason Garrett is a survivor. Every time you think you got Jason Garrett pegged, that this is it, he's on his last leg, he does just enough to succeed. And that's why I'm not giving up on the season, because we got seven games left. And some people will say, oh, our schedule gets tough. I don't know that it gets that much tougher. Now, here's the reality now. Some of the teams that you wanted to lose lost this week. I mean, you saw New Orleans lose. You saw last night the San Francisco 49ers lose. Um, the Eagles, they didn't lose. They were on their bye week. But you right now hold a tiebreaker with those guys. What it's going to come down to is this. It's going to be either the Eagles or the Cowboys to win the division. That's a fact. And more than likely, the other guy is going to be home because the way the other teams are playing. You've got games like this Sunday against the Detroit Lions. 
what we have to go through from here on out is focus on that guy in front of us. You knock him down. And from this point forward, to me, this is playoffs. It's the same thing I said last year, last year this time. You want playoffs? You got to play every week like this is a playoff game that you got to win to keep on moving. You lose, you hurt your chances. You go up to Detroit, maybe without Matthew Stafford. You go out there, you need to dominate that game. That's the bottom line. Jason Garrett's going to be Jason Garrett. Sometimes you have a coach that just doesn't do it. But that's when you as a team has to look inside yourself, each one of those individual players, and say, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. We're going to get this one way or the other. And every man on that team needs to own what they're doing. And everybody needs to step it up just a little bit because the difference between winning and losing is so small. Eight points, three games. That means the kicker needs to kick all the kicks. That means the offensive lineman got to block for, you know, half a second longer. That means Zeke needs to get a half a yard more on a carry. That means Dak Prescott has got to get a few more completions in there. That means the defense has got to keep guys from running 10, you know, 11 yards, you know, at a chop. That means you got to get to the quarterback a little quicker. And these guys, these 53 guys have to stay together as a team. And us as a fan base need to stop with all of this crap. And it, I'm just sick and tired of this whole thing about Dak Prescott, Dak Trashcott, Dak stinks. You know, he's a bum. Get him out of here. You know, he, he doesn't deserve to get paid. I'll pay him $10 million and tell him to walk. You know, franchise tag. and let, I, I'm just sick of that. Because, see, if your gold standard is Tony Romo, if you guys that are still – Tony Romo fans that are like Dak Prescott took his place. That, that goes on every day in the NFL. It goes on to every player where eventually somebody is going to take your spot. It's the natural evolution. Because Roger Staubach still isn't playing anymore. He was great, but he got old. He got injured. Troy Aikman, he was great. He got old. He got injured. Somebody else is always there to take your place. Instead of being mad about Dak Prescott taking Tony Romo's place, be glad that we had a guy that could take Tony Romo's place. Because there's other teams, and I got one that's 30 miles from here, that is begging to have somebody take a quarterback's place. Year after year after year, they spend boatloads of money. They sign free agents. They draft quarterbacks. The Redskins have spent four number ones on quarterbacks since 2012. Four first-round picks and a second. They've also signed a couple of free agent quarterbacks hoping they'd be starters. The fact that we went from Tony Romo, who was one of the best quarterbacks the Dallas Cowboys ever had, to Dak Prescott is a miracle, especially since it didn't even cost us a first-round pick. So instead of picking this guy apart, how about we pull a Garrett and clap for him? Be thankful because the standard that you guys have, some of you, there is no quarterback in the history of the NFL that could live up to it. When you hear about Shannon Sharp, well, well you know, the pass was right here. It wasn't right here. It was right here. He was a little late on the delivery. There's no quarterback. To, to, I, I, I'm gonna, I, if I ever met Shannon Sharp, my question would be, tell me what quarterback can actually do what you claim that Dak Prescott is not. I want to know, is there a quarterback out there that could actually live up to those standards that you put for Dak Prescott? I don't think you do. I don't think it exists. Because here's the thing. Right now, this moment, no matter what happens with Dak Prescott, somebody has got a way of trying to tear it down. Right now, Dak Prescott is on pace for 32 TDs. He's got 18 already. Passing. He's got three rushing. That's 21 touchdowns that Dak Prescott has been responsible for this year. The team, when you guys said Dak Prescott, you know, dink and dunk Dak, 
couldn't throw the ball for two. I can't throw for three for, for two hundred yards. He's averaging three hundred eight yards per game, which comes down to four thousand nine hundred and thirty six yards on the season, almost five thousand yards. A thousand yards more than last year. His QBR is over 68% completions. How much more do you expect from the quarterback? Because here's, here's an interesting thing, because, and, I, and this is where it's going to get ugly. I know it's going to get ugly here because you better not say anything about Tony Romo. But here's the thing. Right now, Tony Romo's best year in passing Yardage-wise, was 4,903. This season, right now, Dak is on pace to pass that. In Tony Romo's career, 36 was the most passing TDs he ever had, followed by 34 and 31. This is only Dak Prescott's fourth year. He's on pace to be four behind that, but if you throw in the rushing touchdowns, he'll surpass that. Completion percentage, Tony Romo's career is 68. And when you look at it, Tony Romo only had two seasons of 69 and one of 68. So this season, right now, all you guys that say that Dak Prescott is a bum, he's on par with the best seasons that Tony Romo ever had. Now, Tony Romo would get a pass from a lot of you fans and say, well, the defense let him down. Coaching let him down. All I'm saying is, is why don't we go ahead and use the same scale and think about the things that we get made excuses for for Tony Romo. Why is it that we don't use those with Dak Prescott? And I say, get off the guy's back because what you're actually seeing right now, what you saw in that game by Dak, something special. And some of you are so blind and so full of hate and just so mad that you're just missing it. This season's not over. You beat the Lions next week, all of a sudden you got a showdown against the Patriots because that is the kind of game, and I'm going to tell you right now, just like New Orleans was our Waterloo, New England will be our Waterloo, and Jason Garrett will get that victory because that'll be the one that the cockroach has to stand on. You beat New England. The Bears, they're not good. They can't score. The Rams, they're in the same boat as we are. They're third in their division. They can't run the football right now. And Jared Goff does not look like a $30 million quarterback. The Eagles, well, we know what to expect with the Eagles. We know what to expect with the Eagles. And we got the Redskins and Buffalo on Thanksgiving. I'm not ready to give up. Hope you're not, because I'm going to be here still representing my boys. I'll see you guys.